Okay, so 14 inches armor test. I'd say successful. The Odin is effectively, well, invulnerable to this kind of firepower. Hey guys, still here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today, time to test some armor. How much can we put on a ship? You guys have been asking me in the comments, make a battleship that has so much armor that it's mostly invulnerable. Uh, that's not going to be easy. A battleship that is invulnerable uh, requires a lot of armor. Now, I've already tried to record this video once, but the audio is terrible. So I already have the ship. This is the Odin. She travels at a mere 23 knots, this German battleship. Uh, she does have a lot of range, which is mostly thanks to having a lot of draft. And because of this draft, she also gets more resistance against hits. She has a 12% beam to make sure that I can accommodate for all of the armor that I put on her. And to make sure that I use my engines efficiently, I have gas turbines. Or rather that I use the displacement allotted for engines efficiently, I have gas turbines. Uh, the ship refuses to steer, mostly. But then again, we're just facing a couple of battleships. If they carry torpedoes, it's going to be annoying. Because we don't have a torpedo blister. We do have is Citadel 4 Turtleback Armor. I found it more fitting for this type of ship because it gets me more resistance and more resistance essentially gets you a, well, a bit of damage reduction. You can, of course, go for the all or nothing armor scheme, which frees up another 7,000 tons, but um, you only get half the resistance, but more armor strength. So we're going to be doing a test with the Turtleback Armor and then potentially after that, another all or nothing. Now, when it comes to armor, I try to round the ship out as best I could. So that means 20 inches of main belt armor. So essentially from here to here. Then we get 15 inches of fore belt, 15 inches of aft belt, 13 inches of main deck armor. So again, that's protecting the citadel, if I'm not mistaken. We get 12 inches of fore deck and 12 inches of aft deck. And all of this is plus 112%. So we're looking at about 25 inches, give or take. 16 inches on the conning tower and 24.6 inches on these 20 inch guns. These 20 inch guns have a pretty potent punch since they're firing capped AP shells. That is not as high as you can go, but it does mean that you get a bit more ricochet angle and thus you're far less likely to ricochet. If I cannot use that, if I cannot pen with that, I got a CPBC common pointed ballistic capped high explosive which gives me plus 22% high explosive pen. It's no joke with these things. It means that even at 35,000 meters out, I can still pen 3.8 inches of armor. The turrets are not quick. They rotate very slowly as they only have hydraulics, but they do reload pretty quick in 54 seconds. Now, since this is an armor test, I'm not gonna be putting any secondary guns on the ship. It's not required for what I have today. So let's get to work. Let's see what the enemy builds. We're facing three French battleships today. Range 18 clicks. Let's slow down to full speed. I feel the ship is pretty heavily protected. Uh, and actually, we're going to turn slightly away to maintain a nice ricochet angle ourselves. What do we have here? Uh, French, definitely French, since they're only bow turrets. I really wonder how they're going to make use of this turret down here in the middle. Um, I'm kind of confused about what exactly the point is with that one. But then again, the AI works in mysterious ways. Most firepower that these guys get is 14 inches. So I think that the Odin is going to be rather, rather unimpressed <laughs> with your firepower. In fact, can you damage this? No. 1.4% <laughs> chance. No. They essentially cannot damage the ship. Um, that means I can just try and chase it down. I do wonder, is AP the best option here? No, it ricochets. Even if I'm getting, at this range, probably deck hits. High explosive is probably my better friend here. Look at this, I'm bouncing high explosive shells. Hold on, they too are bouncing my high explosive shells. Look at that, one, two, three, big impacts, but zero damage. Not even a fire. Do it again. I have 
missed me so far. I've taken four hits. They were all blocked. And sadly, we're kind of moving away from each other. So it's going to take me a little bit of time to get accurate. Although 20% is nothing to snicker at. Oh, Dawn. Why are we not petting? Switch back to AP. Oh, I'm on fire. That's more like it. Main deck. Penetration. 296 points of damage. That's nice. At this point, they seem to have resorted to using high explosive. Seeing as they're struggling to deal damage with anything else. But I suspect that these high explosive shells are going to be a little underwhelming. Since they're only 14 inch. Yeah, blocked. So yeah, 14 inch is not really going to be that much of a problem. Um, and at this range, I can very comfortably just butcher these French ships, probably one by one by one. 20 kilometers out means I can pen 26 inches of armor, although it's pretty likely to ricochet. Uh, a high explosive at this range might be a better option with 6.7 inches of armor. And... Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so 14 inches armor test. I'd say successful. The Odin is effectively, well, invulnerable to this kind of firepower. Good. Restart the battle. Let's see what the French come up with now. New round, new French battleships. What do you have? We are looking at more 14 inch guns. Oh, come on. You're going to have to dream a little bigger. We've already seen the 14 inches. Unless these guys carry different shells, they are not very likely to get a drastically different outcome. So I suspect that once again, we'll be able to take these guys down without really taking that much damage. And it seems that because these ship designs carry more firepower, they have less armor to compensate. So they probably don't really get to last very long. And of course, with the French, and this is a mandatory joke, you gotta run away at some point. So I'm just gonna do some damage and wait till the French run away. But what I was hoping for is something a bit bigger. I need bigger guns to shoot the Odin. There you go, overpen. Get me bigger guns. New round, new attempt by the French. They've brought something bigger. Uh, this is the Mega Richelieu with, <laughs> don't laugh, 12 17-inch guns on the bows. Um, I don't know, this is the Richelieu after her one-night stand with the Nelson, I guess. It's not pretty, it's going to be some sort of English-French bastard with huge guns. So, let's see what the Odin says about 17-inch shells. What can we do about those? Oh, it takes some damage, but that was the main tower. The main tower, part of the superstructure, really doesn't get that much armor. So I'm not surprised that at this point, the tower is the first thing to take damage. There's more high explosive coming in. And since there are quite a lot of these ships, this is potentially going to hurt. Partial pens. Five blocked, six blocked. Some fires were set. As these guys carry quite a lot of high explosive uh, potential. I mean, 17 inch shells are no joke. So yeah, the Odin is probably going to take a bit more damage. Can she dish it out faster in this case than the French can? Can she outlast the French? Oh yeah, at this rate, definitely. Ship is already flooding. Here, four belts, partial pen, main deck, partial pen. Full pen on the French ship. So yeah, 17 inch guns are not quite going to cut it. It is, however, the high explosive that will probably do me in. If given enough time to the French. But I'm not really suspecting or expecting in that sense that the French are going to last that long. Because this ship has already taken a lot of flooding. Engines out. The ship is on fire. I think with... Three to five more salvos. We should be able to eliminate this guy as a contestant. Uh, oh. Odin has switched fire to the lead battleship here. And it instantly blew off 10 to 20% of their structural integrity as well. Yeah, so these French ships are not really going to outlast the Odin. 
75% chance to hit. Lots and lots and lots of damage. Range. 15 kilometers. Do me a favor, load the high explosive. I suspect that we might be able to do a whole lot of damage with that. 15,000 meters means 9.7 inches of armor pin. So essentially we destroy the entire superstructure in one pass. If it hits somewhere near that. Yeah, 486 damage. Uh, aft belt, main deck, fore belt, main belt, main belt. Okay, so the shells are coming in pretty horizontally. Since we're only getting belt pens. As far as the Odin goes, she is presenting a pretty, pretty broad surface, pretty flat surface, which is allowing the French to do quite a lot of damage. Even though they have less than a percent chance to pen me. That's insane. This guy is going right to the bottom. Second battleship has also taken potentially critical damage. Yeah, you're done. Good night. Fire should be able to take care of that ship. That shall sink before that. So Odin just knocked out one battleship, essentially two, and has lost about 40% of her structural integrity. But since most of the firepower from the French has been eliminated, I don't think that the French are going to be able to sink the Odin. Okay, what do we have here? The Flandre. Not a bad ship. 580 million. Longitudinal weight offset is not great. But then again, that is difficult with these Frenchies. Considering that it's difficult to put a, a big gun on the stern. 17 inch guns. Uh, what type of shell are you using? Increased AP, increased HE for secondary is fine. Semi-ballistic for AP. Okay. So these use pretty, well, relatively bad AP shells. But their HE shells are capped ballistic. So that is why they are pretty consistent about doing damage to the Odin. These 17-inch uh, HE shells at... 12 kilometers, so 12 and a half. Yeah, they can pen 9.7 inches of armor. So they can pretty easily blow up the entire superstructure. Even though we're pretty close to their armor threshold. Or their pen threshold. Yeah, you're done. Okay, so that's the Flandre and the Brennis. Um, by the way, these two ships together are the same price as the Odin. These guys were 550, oh, sorry, 580. So actually Odin is cheaper than two of these battleships combined at 972 million. It's not a cheap battleship at all. But keeping the thing alive is far cheaper than building a new battleship. And of course, if this was the campaign, they would also lose a ton of crew. Which might hurt them even more. Okay, uh, let's see what else they can come up with. New round, new French battleships. These guys uh, seem to be very, very heavy on the top. 18-inch um, guns, six of them. They very much stick to their promised format of having all guns on the bow. And these 18-inchers, depending on the shell type, could cause problems. Could cause problems. Based on the angle, uh, yeah, well, turning is not really a thing with this ship. 1200 meter turning circle, I kind of doubt it. I mean, if you look at this, by about 3 kilometers from now, I'm going to be changing direction by, what, 45 degrees, if that? So it's more like it has <laughs> a 6 kilometer turning circle, if that. Anyway, let's see what these 18 inches can do. Depends to pen me, 1.3%. Not bad. However, it seems that once again, the French have decided to use some serious high explosive shell. Can I do the same? Oh, yes. That was a 20 inch pen on the fore belt of the ship. 1331 damage, and essentially knocking out most of the major systems of the ship, especially the engines. So if I do that again, and I get lucky again by penning the four belts, which means it really doesn't have a lot of armor. I can pretty quickly knock out one of their fighters. 
And just take out the other ones slowly. Yep. Jeez, HE on these things are no joke. This friendship has had enough turning away to let somebody else take the lead for a bit. But as it does that, it's opening itself up to further damage. Commercial pen. Sorry, overpen actually, and a ricochet. Overpen right through the bow belt. I think their bow belt's pretty terrible. Odin, down to 85. Oh, they're angling again. Yeah, that's gonna ricochet. Switch back to the high explosive. Yeah, there you go. 1064 damage. The ship is largely flooded. And the parts that are not flooded are probably on fire. Boom. 2156. I am curious to see what sort of armor scheme these guys have. And even though their pen chance is terrible, they still do a respectable amount of damage simply with their high explosive shells. Now at this point... They're pretty broadside. AP should do it. If I can go right through their belt, especially the four belt, I can pretty quickly do a lot of damage. There you go, 718. Taking off 30% of their structural integrity. And yes, the ship is on fire again, but I have a very experienced crew. I should be fine. Yeah, that's another 335. Let's load the high explosive, see if we can hit the four belt again. Even though I have absolutely no bearing on that. Can we do it? 396, setting some fires. Come on, tell me about your structural integrity. Tell me about your armor scheme, tell me about your guns. Because I suspect that they're using capitalistic HE shells again. Flooding, rudder out, rudder fixed though. How's my armor doing? It's, it's, yeah. it's all this high explosive. But it's not a lot of damage. 6, 8, 16, 12, 12, 11. It's not a lot, but it adds up. And now I've already blocked 109... No, sorry. Um, no, I haven't really blocked that many at all. There was one ricochet and just a whole lot of partial pens. Almost everything was a partial pen. There was only one full pen against 9.7 inches of armor, so that's the superstructure. That's what that did. But in the meanwhile, the Voltaire has been fully identified. We can see the Voltaire is only 240 million worth of ship. Uh, she has run out of ammo for her HE shells. So this is her last salvo then, right? That means that the next salvo is going to be AP. Yeah, that's AP. I think AP stands very little chance of actually dealing damage. That's blocked. That's partial pen. Partial pen again. Yeah, these shells are not too dangerous. Whereas the Voltaire's armor scheme, four belt is two and a half inches. This thing is pretty bad. Now, I want to redesign my own ship. Because the turtleback armor has proven its usefulness. But what about the all or nothing armor scheme? This means that your ship gets more construction time. That's fine. The armor costs more. That's fine. Your armor weighs more. But you take um, quite a bit of displacement that you can use to tack on even more armor. So let's say that we're going to put this to 25. Yeah, this to 20. Maybe that's a bit much. 17 on both. Uh, 14 on the main deck. Maybe... No, it's a bit heavy. 13.5? We're getting there, but it's a bit much. Put this to 24. Too much. There. So now I have even more armor. 24 inches, and my armor quality has gone up a few more percentages. So now, we're going to need a really big friendship to deal with this. In a new round, the French have once again brought out the 17 inches. This is again a larger version of the Richelieu, and let's see if those 17s have what it takes. 
Because previously, those 17 inches were no joke and did a lot of damage. But I have more armor. Especially more bow armor. So four belt, that is 17 inches. That's not telling quite the whole story. It's 17 inches times 2.2. Because I get 120% armor quality bonus. So I'm effectively looking at 37 inches of armor. And that is just the four belt. And the first few shells have hit, but got completely blocked. What is going to happen here? This is a rain of HE shells. It does look like they're going to hit. Block, block. Yeah. You just see the shells bouncing off here. So these shells, 17 inch high explosive. Aside from being put on fire, we're essentially immune. Essentially, these guys can't really hurt us. Unless they get closer. At which point, they might. There we go. Structural integrity, 99%. 45 hits. Sorry, 47 hits, 47 blocked. Switch to high explosive. Target the lead ship. So we're getting partial pens. Sorry, they're getting partial pens. And I'm getting no hits. Now they're starting to do some damage. There were only four partial pens, but look at how much armor was in the way. 30.1 inches of armor. Frenchies, do some damage. <laughs> At some point, I'm thinking, maybe I don't even need AP shells. All these videos I've done so far, HE has been my best friend. And yes, AP has its moments, but I mean, if I fire an AP salvo now, am I going to do more than the about 320 damage that I just got? I kind of doubt it. If it hits and if it pens, yes, you do a lot of damage, but that's a big if. Let's see what we get. Hello? Shells? Ah, there you are. 255, 193. Okay, so I got a bit more. But these... <laughs> these 20 inch guns have too much pen. I'm getting over pens. So, either my guns have too much armor pen, or their ships have too little armor. Uh, whichever it is, this guy is in trouble. Wow. That was unexpected. Uh, we hit their aft deck and four belt. And just even the four belt got penned. But then again... Yep. About 10 kilometers, 12 inches of armor pen. With HE. 48 inches of armor pen with AP. So yeah. Oh, this thing is turning into a submarine. Expensive one at that. Go on. Yep. That's a thousand damage, and that's essentially a French battleship dead. Um, I'm gonna run a bit, another test. Let's see if we can find the biggest guns that the French Navy have. Restart. Since it was taking the AI way too much time to get a decent ship together, I decided to build one myself, and this is the France. She is 506 million worth of battleship with six 20-inch guns. So very similar to mine, except that the French get three. Seasoned crew, uh, propulsion is nothing special. Barbette armor is three, so a heavy barbette thickness. Um, the best guns that money can buy. Generation three rangefinder, stereoscopic rangefinder, and quite a lot of armor. This thing is very comparable to what I can build. And I'm actually surprised at how well this thing compares to mine. Because I get 24 inches, 17 and 17. I don't think I can quite fit that on this hull. Um, yeah, not quite that. But it is pretty respectable, this amount of armor. Can I get 11? Can I just put this back to 15 or so? Yeah, and you still get 5,000 tons left. If you go for a super battleship, you can make it even bigger. Anyway, let's see what these guys can do. Oh, for shell type, they get Cat Ballistic 2. Right, let's make them super heavy shells there. And Cat Ballistic HE. So they get the most 
armor piercing that I can put on this ship. Although I say that. Which one was it? Two powder is 12.5% extra pen. Um, at 20,000 meters, they can pen 34 inches of armor with their AP. At 10,000 meter, that goes up to 62. And at half that, 5,000 meters, 82.4 inches of armor. I think that we're going to struggle against this particular design. Because this is a lot of firepower. I'm also probably going to struggle against what... Uh, their HE can do to my ship. And my HE might struggle dealing damage to their ship. So everybody's going to be struggling all around. Here comes their first salvo. That's AP. Hold. Might not even hit me. At least these won't. This is... Potentially more dangerous. Doink. Even that ricocheted. Nice. That's a range of 21.7. So at 21.7, we can still ricochet. Blocked. They blocked my high explosive shell. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Ow, ow, ow. Main deck, pen, partial. Uh, four deck, pen. Yeah, they're doing quite a bit of damage. And I'm doing exceptionally little damage in return. Partial pen. Boink. See this? is far less survivable. If you come up against the worst 20 inch guns that you can imagine, or rather the best, then you don't ricochet, you don't get partial pens, you sometimes just get full pens. 10 penetrations versus 29.4 inches of armor. That is my armor... Superstructure maybe? Superstructure got penned? Uh, no, main deck. Actually, main deck and main belt. Partial pens. Main deck was a full pen. That's interesting, because the main deck is 13 and a half inches. Boink. Full pen. Again. Where? Main deck. These shells, essentially plunging fire at this point, because they come in at a very decent 30 to 45 degree angle. They go right through the deck armor. And that deck armor might be about 27 inches. It's not enough. It's not, a, sorry, 29 and a half inches effectively, but these things can pen a whole lot more. Uh, my shells at this range, somewhat comparable. They can pen 26 inches, 17,000 meters, they can pen 32 and a half inches. Uh, sorry, no, I need to be looking at deck. Yeah, so 22, 25, 26, somewhere in that vicinity. So is this ship going to be entirely invulnerable? No. Uh, is theirs? No. Because that just hit them on the fore deck and the main deck and did a lot of damage myself. At this point though, I think Odin is just going to take too much damage. Ooh, another pen. Maybe she has a chance. Although, I'm concerned that my damage output's just not there. I just don't fire enough shells fast enough. Because they fire 18 guns, essentially. I fire 8. Ricochet. Yep. Now, could you armor up a ship to sustain hits like these? Yes. But it's always going to be a trade-off. You're either going to have a lot of deck armor, or you're going to have a lot of belt armor. But generally not both. Um... With gas turbines and a low speed, there's not a whole lot that I can reduce about my displacement that's required for the engine. So that's kind of stuck. Um, I don't think you can do much, much more than this. Well, yeah, you could do more, but then you're sacrificing firepower and the enemy can still take you apart because you cannot damage them. So can you make a ship very heavily armored and sustain hits from, well, anything from 14 to 18 inch guns? Yes. 20 inch guns? Not so. 20 inch guns are a bit much. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what your thoughts are. And if you have any further suggestions for videos, I am all ears. Let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to support the channel, link down below in the description is my Patreon. And I would greatly appreciate your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon for more videos.